What happened to you during this short silence? Did it bring you more or less in contact with yourself, your neighbor, the whole audience, or the space in between us? I'll leave that question to you. What I do know is when we enter the silence, we entered... <laughs> there she is. Yes, we, we, we entered the shared domain. And that shared domain has a certain quality. In that shared domain, in that silence, we're equal. We're equal in the light of something bigger. <coughs> Am I talking about a god or something? No. I'm talking about a herd, a herd of horses. Horses have survived for 65 million years by the wisdom of the herd. Horses are prey animals. Horses are probably more a we than a me. Shit happens. <laughs> always. And always on the right moment. <laughs> so what's interesting is, all the information of the herd is still present in every single horse you meet. Every single horse you meet, you can meet the wisdom of the whole herd. You can make contact with the soul of the herd. But for us humans, it's not so easy to get access to that information. And that's because, for the simple reason, we are predators. We are predators because we think in lines, they move in circles. We think in goals, in focus. For her movement in itself is the most essence element. For us, dependency is something we have, we have at least an ambivalent emotion about. For her, dependency is a blessing. But if we can connect in a way that she allows us to be part of her herd, then we can get access to vital information about the way we are connected to our own herd. Our grandfathers, our grandmothers, everything which happened in our history, everything which made us what we are right now. Why? Because she will tell you in a split second, if you are a reliable member of the herd. And it's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. It's just feedback, or feed forward, whatever you call it, from, with rooted back to the soul of the herd. It's not personal. First, let me introduce you to us. Ah. This is Kaylian. She's my leading mayor. It touches me when she makes contact in this way. I, uh, she's 31 years old. Um, she's my leading mayor. And uh, my name is Ruud, uh, Ruud Knapen. I'm a coach, consultant. And uh, I work with the wisdom of the herd in transformation processes, in companies and on a personal level, both. When I bought her, when I met her, she was given up for dressage because she cannot bend because of her back problems. So this horse had no future. And I was a savior at the time. I looked at her and I thought, I'm going to save you. But in fact, she saved me. How did this happen? Mm, again. It's nice, it's nice that you notice that, that she first asked me for this movement. And then I said, okay, go, and she makes it. I worked for two years. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second, and with every minute I could get my hands on, 
to get in real contact with her. But she didn't allow me. She just didn't al allow me. I was totally obsessed with it, two years long. Till one morning, one Saturday morning, she was standing in a paddock in the corner. And the session ended the same as all the sessions before. Kalian standing in the corner, her back towards me, stiff, no options to move. And I was waiting in the middle, waiting for something to happen. But she could not escape. There was so much pressure. And this morning, the same thing happened. But I saw something different. And I couldn't look at it anymore. And I just, I know, I, I, I remember I, I turned around. But it was too late. It was too late because the picture of her so frozen in the corner had already hit my body. It just hit my body. And my head became dizzy. My legs became heavy. And uh, there was this unknown pain which flowed through my, through, through, through my body. And it must have been there for a very, very long time. And it was so strange because in that moment, I heard a deep... <laughs> right beside me, and I felt three whiskers, nose hairs, tickling against the back of my hand. And for the first time, Kalian stood right beside me, right behind me. For the first time, she allowed me to be part of her hurt. And more important, maybe, I had become part of my, of my own hurt, of my own inner hurt. Mirren, I want you to ask you to take Kellyan with you. It's my daughter. Thank you very much. After that moment with Kellyan, my own learning moment, I became a horse assisted coach. And 10 years later, I'm standing in a riding school in a Maniche. It was a seminar. It was a seminar about personal issues. And there was this older woman who comes to me. I think she was 65 years old. She looks at me and she says, I have a rather difficult, heavy issue. And you know, I don't want to talk about it. But maybe I can look at it. Can you help me? I said yes, but I didn't know how. And we started this seminar, I know, I remember, and there was first was a guy who went into the paddock, but the horse couldn't connect to the guy because it was already connected to that woman. And the horse stood still in front of that woman on one meter distance, in total silence, with only the rope in between them, and it was such a silence, it had such a weight that everyone in the group instinctively moved backwards to make space for the process, which happened. And what I saw was this deep interaction, this woman sitting with her hands on her lap, receiving whatever it was, in con full contact with the horse, in totally silence. And a sentence hit me, it popped up, it was not my sentence, it came from out of the field. And because I promised her not to speak, I said it in my head. And the sentence was, dear child, when it's my time, I will follow you. And she looked at me, and was just as not. It was the end of the session. And after the seminar, she comes to me again. And she says, Ruth, thank you and your horse for offering me the possibility to look at my firstborn child who died immediately for the first time. She was 65 years old. And she continued, it's so strange. I feel more connected with him than ever. And it's so strange. I feel more alive than ever. And moreover, in some kind of silly way, I feel open for everything to come. And I was flabbergasted. 
And I looked at her. I looked at her face. And there was no emotion, no drama, no tears, nothing. What I saw, what I noticed was she entered another state. And I called it a we state, a we state. For her, it was the first time in her life she looked at this very dramatic event. For a mother, it's, it's dramatic when you lose your child. And now she had looked at it. Until then, she could not look at it. She had excluded it from her life. She had excluded it from her past. And now it was included. She was no longer separated from her past. It had become a part of it, and vice versa. The past had become a part of her life. Like a, like a source, like a resource. And it's strange to say about such an event. That is what horses do. This is what horses do. And to be honest, I don't understand how it works. There, yes, there is scientific research. Search for it on, on Google. But I don't understand. But I see it happen. What I see happen is that they offer us a we state. And in that we state, we in some kind of way are very gently open for everything reality gives us and has given us. Our blessings, our traumas, our full potential. Everything. And the strange way is everything, it's, 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 it's everything which made us who we are and probably what we, what, we will, what we will be. But it's a resource. That is what horses do. And thank you very much. This was what I wanted to share with you, with and without Kalian. <laughs> Thank you.